up against, of course, is the Terran Cure. So far, not the best results here, especially against Zerg, just 0-2, but pretty mediocre at 4-4. Four and four. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's basically been uh, average, kind of standard player. He has shown some really impressive games against tough opponents that surprise people, uh, but in general, I feel like he's just not quite... It's funny to say he's like not quite Jinair Ace level. Like he's not on the same level as these other players like Maru and Rogue. Oh yeah, that's and for SOS. Sure. Like he's he's trying to get there. He's almost there, but he's just not there yet. He's not on the level of this player either, who's ten and three in pro league. He's also one and two versus Terran. His uh, most famous CVT, I would say, is the one he lost to Marine King's timing attack on yep. Polar Knight. Yeah. Uh, memorable game there, and uh, this guy behind Ty, he is second place for win ratio here with that uh, ten and three. Uh, Ty being twelve and three, of course. So this guy is a guy you have to take very, very seriously. And Cure has a big game ahead of him. Yep, this is going to be a fun match for sure. But Roro needs a win on Merry Go Round here, or his team is going to lose 0-3 here at the SPL. Let's do this, Brendan. SK Telecom. Up here in the top left on Merry Go Round, it is, of course, Cure. And down here to the 6 o'clock in pink for Samsung, it's Roro. Looking a bit stressed out. Not having the best outlook for his team right now, but he knows that he needs to win this. He's like, oh, I have to carry my team once again. That's how it feels for Roro sometimes, I feel. Yep. Uh, Samsung, a team that was so, so good uh, in round one, looking a lot better than some of the other favored teams to win the whole thing. And um, their Zerg lineup was what really carried them. And yep. Roro is the king of that. I feel like the big name there for Samsung, who was doing so, so well, especially in round one, was Solar. Uh, a Zerg that did really well. He was like four and one, and then he kind of fell off. I think he's sitting at four and seven right now, and he just hasn't even played in the past couple weeks. He just hasn't even showed his fake face again. And I'm like, what what happened to that guy, you know? He, so much. he was one of the key guys that actually, you know, if you win an extra game here or there, you take it to an ace match or you win a, a game or a matchup, and he just kind of disappeared for them. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, it's weird because he was considered by many to be, like, one of the best uh, Zerg versus Protosses in the world. He was hyped up by a lot of personalities, uh, you know, in and outside of Korea as being the guy who was going to come in and, uh, you know, and do it all. And, you know, he played in Code S. He made it to that final match. He lost to Rain in his EVP, um, where it was just proven essentially that, you know what, he's really good in this matchup, but somebody like Rain is just on another level. And you look at his results in uh, Code A this season, he went 4-0 in the group, actually, uh, winning matches against uh, Journey and Biel, so playing a ZBT and a, Z, uh, a ZBZ to get out of that group, but he didn't actually have to play against any process. And I mean, he's just somebody who clearly is showing results a lot of the time, but not consistently enough, I suppose, for uh, for Samsung to look at him and say, you know, we want to send you out every time. I, I look at Roar and I'm like, he's a must-send Zerg. He's not a, a Zerg that you, you kind of send sometimes, and you look at Shine, and you're like, he could be sent in an ace match in like a, a map where you expect a Zerg, or maybe you send him on a ZVZ map. But otherwise, yeah. you don't really. He's not really a must send either. But I look at this lineup, and the only player I have a problem with is Emotion. I'm like, is he really somebody that you want to be sending out right now? Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was obvious in the game that he played against Maru that he is just not really at the level where he can, you know, wrestle with the big titans, especially a guy like Maru. And that's something you have to take into account. If you're going to play against generic Greenings, it's definitely possible that they send Maru first. And having a motion play against him just led to that very one-sided matchup. That oh, was nice deny there with the Reaper. He's still got the Spore Crawler down. Well, that was pretty cool. He tried to block that Extractor there and almost got that kill. As it is, still no kills on the Reaper, but good micro against those Zerglings. That was pretty crazy. We don't really see moves like that all too often. Cure with a solid start here is actually going to target down the drone coming out of that egg. Unfortunately, the queen will pop out here and stop that harassment. 
with two Reapers here now. He can do a little bit more damage, a little bit more poking. Oh, there's no third Reaper follow-up. It's just going to be a little bit more poking here. And uh, he's going into his factory, his reactor back at home. Poking yeah. that queen down, getting it down to about half health. This is a this is a build we've seen a lot of turns do against Zerg. They they start with the Reapers, just get two, maybe three times sometimes, but then they switch into that double CC, get the factory out, get a bunch of Hellions and harass a ton. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's trying to get the health of the Queen down so he can get that extra harass down a little bit later. Oh, this is actually really well played there. Yeah, Kiri, Kiri showing off some of his moves. Yeah, he's just, and basically he's just uh, playing so well here. And a lot of people wouldn't put so much of their multitasking into that one micro because, you know, if you kill a queen, that's like really more so a mistake of your opponent than a success of your own. But he was really uh, forcing it hard. And if just one micro mistake happened on that queen, he might be able to pick it off. Now, back at home, he's getting a starport and a third CC. The starport's actually placed in a bit of a peculiar place. It's on the low ground here. That has to be not able to queue up that depot. Yeah, I actually like that because he knows, especially on this map, uh, a Zerg player is going to send that Overlord towards the top right of the base and then come, you know, down towards the top because that's where you're going to get the most scouting information. But if you hide it a little bit lower down towards your natural and it doesn't get scouted, you know, maybe could help you out there. He's going to throw down the tech lab right away. Yeah, just um, I'm going to take a closer look at this. Okay, so he's making the tech lab on the starport. Yep. And that means that the other tech lab that he has is going to be for a faster stim, uh, which he hasn't researched yet. But when Overlord comes in here, he sees just he's like, oh, probably just stim coming down. He's continuing to make Hellions here, so no swaps there. And it looks like with this type of play, the idea is to delay the third base as long as possible and try to force a cancel maybe. But what is against him is Aurora Nidus. Oh, boy. This is going to be interesting. He's going to get this Rotoran out. He's going to have the Nidus. He's going to be able to get across this, you know, decently long match so, so quickly and even could get into the main base. There's no Kira spotter. not scout that, yeah. He doesn't have any supply depots over there, and this is something, you know, that does not happen very often. So it's definitely not something that Kira would expect in a normal game. Oh, this Reaper is coming across, but it looks like he's just going to move up to that, that high ground location just make sure there's no third base there. Uh, when I saw that jump up, that, that perspective, I thought it might have been a Reaper coin in the main base. Okay, so first he actually Nidus is to the front. Oh my god, does the Banshee see it? No, it does not see it. Just great location the there. there. The Banshees also, by the way, are going to be a great tool to defend this. But if he doesn't know it's coming, it's not going to matter too much. There's a Nidus coming out. There's that sound. He's got a wall up. He's bunkering up. He's got two factories on the way. They're way, way too far away to actually help out a lot here. The Queen's also, with their range here, going to help out against the Banshee, but that Cloak, once it finishes, can actually keep that Banshee alive. Needs to make sure it survives until then. Nice has been queued into the main base right now, meanwhile. Yeah, Nice is in the main base, and that Banshee is cloaked, so he's not able to get the spotting, but he does have the Overseer now, so he can see it. But, you know, with the two bunkers coming up, and he does have, a, you know, a bunch of units there at the front, is going to defend. But look at this. It's coming into the main base. A ton of roaches here. Yeah, so many. I mean, he put the rest of the roaches, actually, from the, the attack at the outside into that Nidus and then put them back into the main base, knowing that doing the damage at the front was not going to happen. Another Banshee's on the way. Two Widowmines, a Siege Tank, and a Marauder. But it doesn't matter, because what's really on the way here on the production tab is a GG coming out from Cure. There's no way to recover from this. The production tab is showing GG all the way. Production tab man. says GG right there, man. That's all that's coming <laughs> There's out. There's one big G and a second big G right next to it. That's actually happening. it's like a G, but it has the two next to it because two of them are oh, coming God. out, Brent. And that's what's happening here. Two GGs being produced. <laughs> Oro has done a, a tricky move here. We don't see this happen, like you said, very often. It's pretty rare. It's pretty risky. And uh, with the overseer here now, he's going to be able to target those banshees down with the queens. The third queen appears. Way too many roaches. All the SCVs are dead. And I don't care how much AoE damage he has on those Hellions. I just don't see him getting his way out of this one. Banshee does go down before he kills the last of the Queens. And it looks like Samsung is going to claw their way back into this series. You know, it's a bit odd to me that Roro doesn't all in. He's such a good player and, is, you know, is decent in this matchup. He has so much more experience and cure and decides doing all in just the same. Which, you know, that's what also I, I'd say makes it more surprising. Yeah. I feel like he just felt it in this matchup, you know. He he just saw that there wasn't any spotter in the main base for career. He felt like he could get across the map. Maybe he had this build practice, and he was like, well, I feel like I can just take this guy out pretty quickly. And uh, did exactly that. Well, so, you're <laughs> slowly being uh, ripped apart here. 
the siege tanks like coming out and being like trying to push through the roaches. Look at him try to micro. He's gonna go on the creep now. Like, well, yeah, that's uh, goodbye siege tank. He has nine supply here. GG. Uh, no Quick chrono game. boost for Terran. Took a little while for those GGs to come out <laughs> off the production tab. <laughs> Roro looking solid, just gets into the main base with that Nidus. I mean, the outside Nidus already did enough damage, and build order wise, it was a very unfortunate circumstance because he was going into double factory, which takes a long time to build and make units to come out very slowly instead of Marauders that could then be put into bunkers. So, once he got the Nidus in the main base, that was all she wrote. I mean, he could have probably just walked home and recovered from an attack at the front only, but he didn't see the Nidus coming into the main base, and 